The 2019 NASCAR Pinty Series racing season has reached the midway point and the title fight is heating up. In this final Western Canadian event, 300 successful short track racing laps could go a long way in determining the champion. We're at Edmonton International Raceway, Wetaska in Alberta for the Luxor 300. Welcome to race number seven in the NASCAR Pinty Series. I'm Dave Bradley, along with Adam Ross and Todd Lewis's trackside. Adam, Edmonton is one of the tightest tracks in the circuit. It always gives the Alberta NASCAR fans their fill of excitement. Dave, you have to be physical here, but patient. It's a long race, and in the end, you need the car to turn if you're going to run up front. Normally, it's hot, but we've had a fall-like blast of weather move into the Wetaskiwin County area. We've had rain, cool temperatures, but it seems to be par for the course. It definitely does, Dave. Points out of Saskatoon has Andrew Ranger 8 up on Kevin Lacroix, 24 ahead of LP Dumoulin. Now, because qualifying got rained out, the 19 car field will line up according to practice times. Kevin Lacroix from St. Estache will lead us off here for the Luxor 300. Now, to get things started, let's send it down to Colin Clausen from Bayer. Drivers, start your engines! <laughs> And the engines fire here at Edmonton International Raceway. Your pole sitter is Kevin Lacroix, but the field is tight here, and it's often been tight when you look at the overall practice times. They are bunched together. There is not much gap between the fastest car and the slowest car on the grid. It is going to be a busy night. Some of these cars have been reworked since the last time out. Brett Taylor had a career day in Saskatoon. Can he repeat that here in Edmonton? Let's take a look at your Mopar starting lineup. As we mentioned, the 74 of Kevin Lacroix on pole. DJ Kennington will roll off alongside him. Looking back to row number two, your points leader, Andrew Ranger in the 27. Anthony Simone in the one is quick. Starting in the fifth position is LP Dumoulin in the 47. Alex LeBay is sixth in the 36. Row number four, Donald Teach in the 24. Mark Antoine Cameron in the 22. Let's look back to row number five. That's where we find Brett Taylor and Mark Dilley, 46 and 64. Row number six is Jason Hathaway in the three. Alex Tagliani has some work to do here in the 18. To the seventh row, it's Brandon White in the 04 and Jamie Krizik in the 34, coming off a solid night on Wednesday. Chantel Kalika in the 43, TJ Rena Motto in the 02, and rounding out the field, Larry Jackson in the 21. Field getting some heat in these general tires behind the 2019 Dodge Ram 2500 Crew Cab Pace Truck, the Laramie Edition. Beautiful truck leads the way at each event we go to. LP Dumoulin aggressively scrubbing those tires, wants to get some heat into them. Here's the E3 spark plugs race analysis, Dave. Well, it's a tight quarter mile track. It's cool today, but the important part, this is a brake race. So let's stop the race at halfway, let the crews work on the car. Before we go to green, let's check in with Todd. Todd? Guys, the story we're following tonight, today is the 11th anniversary of Alex Tagliani's first ever victory in the NASCAR Pinty Series. It came in Edmonton on the road course we used to run. Two years ago, he won here at EIR. If he's going to get his second victory here tonight, he'll have to come from 12th on the grid, but we've seen him charge through the field before. Young-looking Andrew Ranger getting doused in champagne with Alex Tagliani, but you're right, Tagliani can do it. He runs very well. I'm surprised how deep he is in this field, but 300 laps is a long way, Dave. It is on a very, very tight track. Watch for the aggression to come Ready. out early. Ready. Green flag is up and we're underway here in Edmonton. Kevin Lacroix with a good clean start getting out in front. DJ Kennington slots into the second position. Looks like Andrew Ranger going to take third, and then it'll be a side-by-side -side battle with LP Dumoulin in the 47 and Anthony Simone in the one. Now yeah, Simone up on the outside, and that may not be a good place to be this early in this race. That outside group definitely needs to be worked in in a place like Edmonton International Raceway. 
Listen to how long LeBay is on the throttle. Not very long at all here at Edmonton. And, and many, many laps, they will never achieve full throttle, Dave. There's just too much power for the limited amount of traction they have with this gear ratio. And you know what's important, too? Next time we ride on board with one of these cars, and oh. we've got contact half the way in the 24. So the 3 and the 24, TJ, and then Hathaway gets into the 18 as well as he tries to gain some track position to get back in the running order. So a little bit of a pinball was the Kubota number 3 of Jason Hathaway first getting together with TJ and then the 18 of Tagliani. Have another look. Well, Teach tried to close the door. Hathaway was already there, and now Hathaway tries to close the door, and Tagliani is already there. That's how important it is to be on the inside groove here in Edmonton. No caution, but it is early to start mixing it up with heavy contact like that. We haven't even reached the 10 lap mark. You're still out back in line. DJ Kennington has caught your race leader, the 74 of Kevin Lacroix, who led 283 laps in this race last year, only to come up short at the end. Down the front straightaway, DJ Kennington about two feet off the back bumper of Kevin Lacroix. Lacroix using all the racetrack, so he comes off the corner right up to the wall. Kennington running a little bit tighter. Have a look, though. The top four have opened up a considerable gap on the rest of the field. And the rest of the field involves the one of Anthony Simone, the 46 of Brett Taylor as they work around lap traffic of TJ Renamato. Here goes DJ Kennington looking for the lead. He's on the inside of Kevin Lacroix, down the back straightaway. Coming off a podium finish in race number two of the Twin 125s in Saskatoon, DJ Kennington. Did he get a nose in front? I think he did at the line, so your new race leader is the... Astral Edge, number 17 of DJ Kennington. Got into turn three, just a little bit hot there, up the racetrack. Plants it on the yellow stripe, down through one and two. That's the fast way around here. And you see, once Lacroix gets pushed up to the outside, here comes Andrew Ranger. Lacroix, smart move, back off, get back in line, down to that inside groove, because the 47 of LP Dumoulin was about to plug that hole as well. Week in and week out, we talk about how important the spotter is. Communication with somebody is key for these drivers. I'm sure there's plenty being said with Brett Taylor and his spotter in the 46, and Anthony Simone with his spotter in the number one. Brett Taylor to the inside of Simone. Sixth spot up for grabs. Give it to the man from Calgary, Alberta. Riding a high of confidence in the wing and at Dodge. Third place finish at Saskatoon, and it was a hard-earned third place result as well. It was a great race. In race number one, he finished a career best sixth, and then third in the race number two as we got a dice for the lead between teammates. Ranger to the inside of Kennington. being told a real slow car. Larry Jackson well off the pace. In fact, he has turned down onto pit road directly back to the garage area. Battle between three teammates now, all out of the 22 racing stables, and Donald Teach getting together with the 22, and then the 18 comes through, makes some contact with Mark Antoine Cameron. Yeah, they're not showing a lot of teammate love right now. Maybe not. They're fighting to get to the front. That's exactly what especially the 18 of Alex Tagliani is doing as he's marching his way up through there. The dog-eat-dog dog sport, this auto racing. Dave, and on a short track, brings out the best and the worst of everybody. Well, that's what you say. You can be teammates and the best of friends in the pits. Once you get on the racetrack, it's everybody for themselves. And you and I spoke on, in the Saskatoon race of how they have struggled, all of the Scott Steckley racing teams. They're just struggling to get their oval program back on track. They just haven't found the magic in 2019. The 47 sneaks underneath the 74. LP Dumoulin moves up a spot in the WeatherTech.ca Dodge Challengers. We ride on board quickly with Kevin McClaw. How 
about the AGI Dodge of Chantal Kalika? Brand new engine under that hood after the motor troubles in Saskatoon. She wanted to thank both the CBRT team and DJ Kennington Racing. Those crews helped out immensely and allowed her to get back on track here in Edmonton. never really put a stopwatch to it, but I'll bet you you're on the brakes as much as you're on the throttle here at this racetrack. Well, what I was going to say, if you watch the hands of the drivers, they never really straighten out. You're constantly turning here. The track is so tight. If you looked at this racetrack from high overhead, it would look like an oval, but like you said, there really is no straightaway. You're always turning. That takes its toll physically on the drivers. 300 laps, a long distance here on a tight track. Talk about taking its toll physically. The 04 of Brandon White, early detection is the key. He is coming off a battle with cancer, and I don't know, it might not be the safest thing to say, but he has won his battle product for Brett Taylor. Brandon White has spent many years training, running, being in the gym to build up his stamina again. So nice to see him on this trip, putting in great laps in that 04. Yeah, very competitive as the 46. Now the caution out for Brett Taylor, a right front tire oh. down. Oh. He cuts down mid lane hard right in front of the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. He'll roll to the attention of his crew down pit road. He spent a lot of time nursing that car around the racetrack. They're going to have to lift up on it. Let's have a look at the replay. Wow, Taylor way up to the wall in that 46. Sparks flying because the right front corner of that car was dragging the ground. Yeah, general tire cut right down to the rim. And now the 64, Mark Dilley, also in to make some adjustments. So the field under caution for the first time here in the Luxor 300. We'll be back on TSN. Race number seven of the NASCAR Pinty Series, the Luxor 300 by Bayer, is brought to you by... Pinty's, making great food fun. By Mopar, we built it, we know it. And by AGI, makers of Batco, Westfield, and West Steel. Back on the racetrack, ready for the restart. Just like we saw in the last event at Saskatoon, Andrew Ranger restarting on the outside. A brilliant team strategy. Yeah, the two teams definitely talk to each other. And Ranger will lead him to green down into turn number one. And just like that, he'll tuck in front of the Castro Edge Dodge of his teammate. And it's not a guarantee because Kevin Lacroix is a great racer. He could make it work on the outside. But if Ranger restarts on the inside, it could really hang his teammate DJ out to dry. And they'd rather leave Kevin Lacroix hung out to dry. Well, Kevin Lacroix not out to dry at all. He's out for a second spot, driving off the right rear of the bumper-to-bumper dodge the 74 as he tries to make it work up on the outside and there you see just can't he can get a couple laps of momentum but he can't hold there for too too long we've talked repeatedly about the struggles that 22 racing is having on the ovals this year the complete opposite can be said of dj kennings in the 17 andrew ranger in the 27 WMI race cars, so Dave White race cars prepared by DJ Kennington. They're on to something, Dave. Well, you talked a little bit about the WeatherTech.ca number 47 of LP Jumelay. You have to remember, in 2018, he was the champion of this race. He snuck in at the last minute, leading only 17 laps, but he did take home the checkered flag. He was in the fight all day long. Donald Teach gives a push to Anthony Simone down into the corner and then resumes his side-by-side -side battle with Alex Tagliani in that Rona EpiPen number 18. You can see some body damage starting to show on the Circuit Acura number 24 of Donald Teach right on the front of that Chevy Camaro. So obviously bumper to bumper is the 322 racing cars line up nose to tail. Well, right on board the Silver Line Tools number one of Anthony Simone. I feel like we've been hard this year on, on Alex Tagliani and Donald Teach as we've got a battle for the lead between DJ Kennington and Andrew Ranger. What happens in racing is you have to keep exploring. You have to keep trying new things in order to get faster and faster. 
The Stackley teams were the measuring stick by which success was measured in the series. So they keep trying things. Not everything launches you further ahead. Sometimes you hit on something that works. Sometimes you hit on something that doesn't. But if you don't keep tweaking as we're three wide into the corner, uh -oh. you'll never be the champion, Dave. You're 100% right, but not often we see a three-wide scenario at a tight track like this one, and all drivers live to tell the tale. Alex LeBay, Alex Tagliani, and Donald Teach made it work, believe it or not, and limited fiberglass damage to those three cars. No, the same front-end damage that Donald Teach has had for a number of laps. It's still factoring a lot. But look at these two race cars with about a six-car length advantage over the 47 of LP Dumoulin. Will beat it to death. Teammates Andrew Ranger and DJ Kenny. Did you hear that scanner? That was important. That was Joe Chisholm Jr. speaking to Andrew Ranger, talking about the teammate. DJ Kennington in behind. Another caution waves. DJ Renamato in the 0 2. Yeah, he goes for a loop by himself. An innocent spin on lap 79 of this race. The Holler Magazine 0-2 Ford of TJ Renamato. I was just taking a look at that car. We'll have another look at what happened up there. It looks like it wasn't quite by himself. The 22, Mark Antoine Con Cameron making contact. Jamie Krizik, who had a great run in Saskatoon on Wednesday night, in for some attention on his race car. So is Mark Antoine Cameron in the 22. Andrew Ranger leads the way here in Edmonton. Welcome back to Edmonton International Raceway, a quarter mile track, the first in Alberta to be NASCAR sanctioned. As we get set for the restart here in the Luxor 300, a family owned operation just outside of Edmonton in Wetaskiwin, right. Alberta. Loretta and Ron, even their daughter Erica, helping in the grandstand selling refreshments. A wonderful facility. We got a wonderful little race going on at the front. Yeah, the Theory family puts their all into this event. In years past, Loretta has sang the national anthem. There's nothing they don't do in terms of what goes on on a race night here, and they've drawn a fantastic crowd for this event. Yeah, despite the weather, it was cool and gray earlier on today. Obviously, we rained out through qualifying, but the fans have showed up in droves. And I noticed all of the hospitality suites in turn number one, they are sold out. There's a complete grandstand that Bayer has in turn number four. The atmosphere here gets better and better every year. Jason Hathaway sliding underneath the bumper-to-bumper -bumper 74 of Kevin Lacroix. It could be a long ride in that outside groove for Lacroix. He tried to muscle his way down a little on Donald Teach there. That didn't work. Alex LeBay is right behind Teach. Now it's a time for Lacroix to try and be patient out there, try and find that hole to get down. You saw the nose of the 74 trying to duck in in front of the Hotel Le Concorde. Number 36 of Alex LeBay couldn't do it. There's a gap behind, and there he will. And that's what he did right there. You saw him. He, he let off way early for turn three, dropped down in line just ahead of Anthony Simone in the number one. There you see the old four of Brandon White, new crew chief in that pit box here this weekend, and it's a former driver in Noel Dowler, so an experienced person to have on top of the pit box, despite the fact he hasn't done much crew chiefing. A former NASCAR driver, Noel Dowler still, oh, contact, Teach and Hathaway. Right on your bumper. Now we talked to him. Still in line, still in line. Right on your bumper again. Halfway more. Still clear there, still clear, still clear. He's clear now, but it wasn't that way for a long time as Teach working over the back end of the three of Hathaway. And there you see the 04 of White sliding up the racetrack a little bit. And did you notice how calm Jeff Gutler was on the radio with Jason Hathaway? He might be wound up under his headset, but he's got to be the calming voice. We were talking about Noel Dowder, the crew chief on the 04. 
He's been racing shifter carts all over the world. Yeah, in Europe, I think he's making a trip to Europe very shortly here. So cool to see Noel Dowler back at a NASCAR track and good luck to him when he goes over to Europe to race some of those hot shoe shifter car drivers. Anthony Simone to the inside of Alex LeBay. Whoa, he didn't quite clear him as Alex LeBay cuts back underneath the one machine. And he will make that pass stick. Alex Tagliani not too far behind. That's a battle for seventh spot. As Simone will fall in line behind the Silver Watch series. So a little bit of advice clear, being given. Clear, clear, clear. Jeff Gutler repeatedly telling Hathaway he was clear to get back to the bottom before LaCroix got there. And the Ranger continues to lead here in Edmonton. Welcome back to the halfway point of the 2019 NASCAR Pinty Series and the Luxor 300 in Wetaskiwin, Alberta, about 50 kilometers south of Edmonton as we continue under green. Andrew Ranger, your race leader. LP Dumoulin holding down second. DJ Kennington in the 17 is in third, but he has his hands full. Donald Teach up on the wheel. I hope he didn't hear me talking about his performance because <laughs> he has been charging to the front. Yeah, he's going to show you as they work around the lap car, the AGI 43 of Chantel Kalika. Chantel staying down out of the way of the lead lap cars. Andrew Ranger having his way with this one right now, running a pretty line out there right around the bottom of the racetrack, not abusing that equipment. As we see LP Dumoulin, he got up on the, the, the flat there a little bit because the car looked upset. Yeah, it seems like a number of drivers are starting to do that. They're, they're using the, the sidewalk area just to the inside of that rumble strip, and it appears to help these cars turn just a little bit better. It will help them rotate for sure, but you don't want to get too far down there because it'll kick the back end around and you'd run the risk of spinning out. It's starting to look like an Edmonton race now. You look in the nose of the 24, the right front corner of the 74. They're starting to show some damage. There's not as much room at this racetrack as there is at Wyant Group Raceway, for example, the last track we were at. They're not that much different in size, but it's the shape of them, the lack of banking here at Edmonton lends itself to a lot more contact. And of course, Kevin Lacroix comes into this one eight points back of your series points leader in Andrew Ranger. One driver has struggled here today early on and is out of this one after having a career best finish in Saskatoon is standing by with our Todd Lewis. Todd? Brett, you've experienced both the highs and the lows recently. What happened out there? Well, with about 25 laps in, we started getting tight. You know, we made our way all the way up to fifth. And we were running comfortably there, catching the leaders. And all of a sudden, I get him on the radio. I said, guys, we're starting to get really tight. And about three, four laps, the tire went down. And the tire went down and wore the sway bar high off. So, inevitably, we uh, are out of the race. So, it's great to see you out. Yeah, tough break for that team as the 24 of Donald T chooses some muscle to get around the 17 of DJ Kennington. Not sure DJ Kennington really enjoyed that move by Donald T as he gave him a bit of a push through three and four. Now he's looking back to the inside, coming off turn two. Remember Kennington coming off a podium finish in Saskatoon where he led 22 laps over the course of that race. And we are very close to the midway point of this race, waiting for Jimmy Wilson to call the halfway break. It's at his discretion on lap 150 or thereabouts. Still is Andrew Ranger. There you see the Mopar Dodge leading this race, and he's starting to filter into some of the contenders. Anthony Simone qualified in fourth spot, and now he's at risk of going a lap down. A lot of green flag laps, a lot of battling in the middle of the pack allowed Andrew Ranger to get away and close in on the tail end. We're getting reports NASCAR is going to call that break in about one lap, Dave. So it's Simone and Alex LeBay battling nose to tail. And just ahead of your race leader, Andrew Ranger. And that is the caution. So halfway break time here in the Luxor 300 as caution flies. 
This is a scheduled caution period that will give the teams a chance to work on these cars. Jamie Krizik, driver of the number 34, will get the free pass. That'll give us 11 cars on the lead lap. Once he resumes, or once he takes his spot in the back of the field, we'll be able to pull down pit road, Dave. Let's take a look at your VP Racing Midway Race update. Just two cautions for 13 laps. 10 cars, as you mentioned, there will be 11 on the lead lap. The top rookie is Chantel Kalika, currently running in 14. Let's go down pit side as the crews get released. Todd. 27 of Andrew Ranger receiving fuel as the service has begun here at the break. The team is also going to make a small change to loosen him up a little bit. He was saying he's a little bit tight at the end of that run. The 47 of LP Dumoulin, former winner here at EIR. No changes. He is very happy with the car. The 17 of DJ Kennington reporting tight in the center. They will make adjustments as well when they do the service for fresh general tires and fuel to take him the distance. Not a big rush. The crews have five minutes to complete what they need to do. During that time, we'll take a quick break here on TSN. Getting ready to come back to green here in race number seven of the 2019 NASCAR Pinty Series Championship. From Edmonton International Raceway, this is the Luxor 300. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross and Todd Lewis's pit side. Green is up once again. We're back underway. You notice when it's not his teammate running in second, Andrew Ranger back on the bottom for these restarts. Gets a nice launch, but L.P. Dumoulin, that's about as well as we've seen someone run up on the outside. And L.P. Dumoulin, during the first half of this race, was really the yeah, only driver in the latter stages able to keep the 27 honest. Andrew Ranger out in front, got a car length between himself and Dumoulin, deeper in the field, they are scrambling for position. Kennington gets down in front of Alex Tagliani into that preferred inside groove. Tagliani coming off a sixth place finish in race number two in Saskatchewan. He finished 11th in race number one, that dropped him from third in points to fourth in points behind L.P. Dumoulin. Hey, we got problems, this up in turn number one, you see the spring bouncing. As the 04, Brandon White goes around. Brandon White goes around and Mark Dilley goes airborne in the 64 over top of the 04. That's the right rear spring that fell out of Dilley's car when he got up in the air. The rear end dropped in Dilley's car. Nothing, nothing to keep it compressed. The right rear spring came flying out. Let's ride on board. Looked at the sky for a short period of time to the 64. There's NASCAR official Jeff Wilcox with the spring. And the 04 of Brandon White headed towards pit lane. So Dilly will get a new spring. Brandon White will get some attention down pit lane. We'll take a quick break. with your defending series champion, the man from 20 year Quebec, L.P. Dumoulin, as he prepares for this restart on the outside of Andrew Ranger. In through three and four, look at how close they get. As Ranger jumps on the gas, we're back underway. Andrew Ranger's been getting some great launches on these green flags. Donald Teach trying to get to the inside of L.P. Dumoulin. Dumoulin trying to get to the bottom of the racetrack, and he will successfully. Yeah, but will the 74, who's now up in that outside groove, alongside Donald Teach. That seems to be where Kevin Lacroix gets to go. Every time we get a caution, he seems to be restarting up on the outside. And I think he, it looked like he might be able to get down in front of Teach, but Teach going to drive it deep into the corner. Kevin Lacroix fight. That's huge. If he's able to make it stick from the outside, it shows that second groove is starting to work in just a little bit. Wow, we saw these two have contact in Saskatoon. And they're going to do it again in Edmonton. Do you hear those tires screaming at Kevin Lacroix? Searching for traction as the 24 of Donald Teach leans on the bumper to bumper 74. It's a physical racetrack. We spoke about it in the opening, said that's what it was going to take to be competitive. Kevin Lacroix has been on the receiving end quite a bit. Quick ride on board the Castrol Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington is sort of waits to see how this one's gonna pan out. 
He's tucked underneath the 24 of Donald Teach, and now the 74 will try to get down, but won't be able to. There's DJ. No, the, the, the line is filled right up on the bottom, and now to the outside of DJ Kennington, and there's more where he came from. That's got to be frustrating as a driver, right? This could be a big break for Lacroix. DJ got to the inside of Donald Teach, half the way to the inside of Teach. Now here comes Kevin Lacroix. Remember, five laps ago, Donald Teach absolutely hammered Kevin Lacroix repeatedly. Let's see if Kevin Lacroix returns the service. On board with DJ Kennington now as he sets his sights on your race leaders, the 27 of Andrew Ranger and the 47 of L.P. Dumoulin. They're one and two. Lacroix up to the back bumper of the Kubota Chevrolet of Jason Hathaway. Great racing going on. I'm Adam Ross, joined by one half of Bradley Brothers Racing, Dave Bradley. The better half, right? I, it, <laughs> it depends who you ask, I suppose. But Always fun to call these races with you, Dave. I agree. Mike Bradley's having a great season this year. He sure is. <laughs> Finishing second, of course, in the Outlaw Midgets, where uh, we do a little bit of racing in our spare time. My brother finished uh, second last time out. You know, that reminds me of a joke, Dave. Have you heard it? Me and my brother, we know everything. Ask me anything you want. That's one of the things my brother knows. <laughs> I had to abbreviate that for the for this production. It was good though. It was good. Solid one. Ranger is your race leader with the 47 of LP Dumoulin. Holding down second. We're single file at the front of the field, but there's still a lot of racing left to play out. Over the last 10 years, the eventual champion of the NASCAR Pinty Series has won at least one race on the Western Road Trip. This is the final stop on the Western Road Swing here in 2019. Already we've had winners in L.P. Dumoulin and Andrew Ranger. Right now, Ranger's out in front here in Edmonton. I'm going to argue with that statistic, Dave, and I'll tell you why. Kevin Lacroix came out west on a year when it looked like he was bound for championship two seasons ago. Steve Simmons giving DJ Kennington some instruction. All by himself, no pressure out of the back. Kevin Lacroix unraveled during that Western swing. It just went bad for him and bad turned to worse. What I'm seeing on this trip, although he hasn't had the finishes he would, would have liked, he has not yet unraveled. And they could look back at the end of this season and, and say, what won us the championship is that when things weren't going our way, when he was getting manhandled by drivers out there and knocked to the outside, he didn't lose his composure yet. And he, he brought the cars home in one piece with solid finishes, which is what he did not do two years ago. Yeah. So even though that stat is absolutely true, this is a good week for Lacroix. Well, you can see he's in a battle now with the three of Jason Hathaway. Hathaway, again, using that inside in the sidewalk area just below the rumble strip in some areas, and it seems to be working really well for that three car. It sure does as he works that bottom groove very, very well. And Kevin Lacroix working the top groove as well as a driver can also. So great side-by-side -side racing. Seeing a lot of these bodies have been taped up after that midway break. Kevin Lacroix got that right front fender sealed up. Right 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 yep, come on, come on. Top of three, top of three. Three wide three. with a lap top car in the middle. Top of three, top of three, top of three. One inside, one inside. There you go. I'll clear, I'll clear, I'll clear. All good, all good. Come on, your four. Watch your four. Oh, okay, all good. Roll out of it. And we got problems on the front shoot. The 43 of Chantel Kalika goes around. That was Jeff Gutler guiding his driver, Jason Hathaway. But have a look at what happened to Kalika. It looked look like LP was trying a bump and run there on Kalika to knock her up the track a little bit and wound up getting her turned around And TJ Kennington on pit road for some serious adjustments along with Anthony Simone. Andrew Ranger is your race leader. Andrew Ranger, the man from Roxton Pond, Quebec, once again lines up on the inside as we prepare for another restart here in the Luxor 300. L.P. Dumoulin alongside up on the outside. 
And Kevin Lacroix, as always, on the outside groove as well. <laughs> he can't buy a break. Wait in there, outside. Outside. That's Joe Chisholm Jr. guiding his driver, the 27, Andrew Ranger. And uh, what you might think is outside. obvious. You're pulling him outside of your corner. Clear. All clear, clear by hot back to the 47 in line with you now. But the driver's focus is out of the windshield, and it has to be to hit your marks. This is just like having a mirror in your ears. I mean, it's another person watching everywhere around your vehicle, and some of these spotters are very experienced in what they do. We talked about Joe Chisholm Jr. We talked about Jeff Gutler. Those are spotters who have worked down in the U.S. for bigger NASCAR teams. And they do a fine job up here on the short tracks and road courses. It's a versatile bunch as we ride with Alex LeBay. See, the best battle there is for fourth spot between Donald Teach and the bumper to bumper 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Their door handle to door handle. The outside groove doesn't seem to be as bad as it once was. Well, I think Kevin Lacroix is pretty motivated to keep Donald Teach behind, and these two have had repeated run ins. See them almost leaning on each other all the way around this quarter mile track. They slip up just a little bit. The 36 of Alex LeBay will be there to take advantage. But look, Lacroix able to nose ahead a little bit up on the outside. Donald Teach can't keep his car down at corner exit. Kevin Lacroix has a nice arc to the turn as they make a little bit of contact off the corner. And see what that did to the 74 of Lacroix. Just slowed him down enough. That was sheer willpower that kept Kevin Lacroix in this battle. And I don't know what's going to happen to Donald Teach if he clears the 74. I just can't imagine Kevin Lacroix having the patience to put up with that without some sort of retaliation. Again, this is a battle for fourth position. Your leader continues to be Andrew Ranger, followed by LP Dumoulin. Jason Hathaway rounds out the top three. Donald Teach and Kevin Lacroix, a pair of Quebec drivers with the 36 of Alex LeBay, another man from Quebec in that battle as well. If it wasn't for Alex LeBay, Kevin Lacroix would have already pulled behind the 24. But he can't let up because LeBay is there and he'll take the next spot. Change for second. Dumoulin slides back to third as Jason Hathaway and a Kubota Chevy moves up as we're starting to feel some light raindrops around certain areas of this track. Our spotter's telling us they're starting to feel a little bit of wet. And Kevin Lacroix just slid back a couple of spots. Now Mark Antoine Cameron on the inside. He's got to find a place to tuck into line, but Kevin Lacroix's got too much fight. See a little moisture on that camera shot. And if the track is at all damp, you can see now Donald Teach struggling for traction up on the outside. So that'll affect the drivers in that second groove trying to make it work. If there's any moisture at all there, it just won't work. Oh, Kevin Lacroix's eyes had to be wide with Donald Teach backing up towards his front bumper. Whoa! That gives Mark Antoine Cameron a bit of a push. Everybody's sort of tiptoeing their way around. Now Teach works underneath the 36 of Alex LeBay. Teach almost all the way down under the flat in one and two. Alex LeBay trying to hold Teach down to the inside. Now he'll try a crossover, get back behind the 24. Teach's car is used up as we come towards the 50 to go mark here in the Luxor 300. The nose is right beaten. He has had a tough go here today. But he's persevered every time he gets knocked out of the groove. He fights back and makes up positions. It's been entertaining as heck watching Donald T this entire race. Nakwa trying to move around the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. They're connected, looking for a trailer hitch. They're that close as the 74 tucks underneath the back bumper of the 22. Alex LeBay gets to the inside of Donald Teach. Right behind them is Mark Antoine Cameron trying to hold off Kevin Lacroix in the 74. Still there. Still there. Here, here, here. There's here, here. 24 knocking back to the inside. Look at that. The moisture on the windshield of the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. 
not enough to cause a whole lot of grief right now as Cameron gets into the corner of Donald Teach and he'll drive that GM Pie number 22 to the inside. Pair of teammates side by side. Teach not going away in that high groove. He's bound and determined to keep the spot from Mark Antoine Cameron and the Pie Chevrolet Camaro. What a fantastic fight this has been from the fourth right on back to seventh or eight. Really has everybody lined up behind the 27 of Andrew Ranger, who is your race leader in the Mopar Dodge. But this a little bit deeper in the field. Tagliani, Kennington, and the one of Anthony Simone. Simone barely able to get back to the throttle in that one machine. Had to wait till the car was turned. Gets up into DJ Kennington. Now Kennington back to the inside. And Kennington looking for ninth spot around the inside of the one of Anthony Simone. Look at the field of cars. They're all stretched out just ahead of this battle. As everybody knows, they can see the moisture on the window. They're trying to get their spots now because... If a rainstorm is coming, you want to get the positions right now. Yeah, you, you're not going to be able to do it on a wet racetrack. You've got to get taken right now as we have a great side-by-side -side look on board with LP Dumoulin at two different angles. Watch the focus on the defending series champion. Steve Dumoulin just trying to work up to the back bumper of oh, that man. The three of Jason Hathaway is the leader. Work through lap traffic moving around the AGI 43 of Chantel Kalika. In your mark, bud. Of course, the reminder to keep hitting your marks. A little bit of raindrops makes it a challenge out here, but you've got to keep on keeping on. As you can see, the windshield gets a little harder to see through for LP Dumoulin. Talk about defending champion Dumoulin. The NASCAR Pinty Series has proven to be a very difficult title to defend. Yeah, we've never had a back-to-back -back series champion in the history of the NASCAR Pinty Series. LP Dumoulin has set out this year to make that his goal. He says, I want to be the first back-to-back -back champion. And we get some fantastic stats from Bryce here on our team. He feeds us all sorts of information. But that, I think, is my favorite statistic. A championship that has never been defended. Just shows the parity in the field. There are so many drivers who can win on any given day. As you see a pair of teammates battling hard between the 24 of Donald Teach and the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. And right behind them, Kevin Lacroix. I just feel like he's waiting to pounce, Dave. Fifth spot owned by Donald Teach. Sixth and seventh there by Cameron and Kevin Lacroix. This second up for grabs, Hathaway and the 47 of Dumoulin. Good to see Jason Hathaway battling up here in a top three position. And this is the battle that just keeps on going. Donald Teach, and I think all the racing he did side by side with people had to have used up the brakes and the rubber on these general tires. And it's leaving him susceptible to challenges. We talked about the moisture on this racetrack. It appears to have let up just a little bit. As we remain under green, now 36 laps left to be completed. No caution for the rain. We got a few drops. It made it a little dicey at times, but the heat in the general tires allowed these cars to stick, and now the rain intensified. Just as I say that, the clouds open up a little bit heavier. Caution is on the speedway. And you can see just to the south of us, bright, sunny, clear skies, but the rain has started to fall. Now look at how heavy it is now as we ride on board with Andrew Ranger, who's your leader at the time of caution in the Mopar Dodge. And open himself out, a healthy lead, but that lead will be evaporated as we wait and see what the weather does here in Edmonton. So we will not get the rest of the show in. NASCAR has called this race. Andrew Ranger has won the Luxor 300 here at Edmonton International Raceway. Tom Lewis waits for the Mopar driver in an E3 spark plug winner's circle. Todd? 
For the third time this season, Andrew Ranger climbs out of that Mopar Dodge, a winner. You got a big shower. You got a, a rain shower that ended this one a little bit earlier, but win number three. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Very happy, man. It's uh, We put that Mopar car again at the top of the list, and uh, I'm so glad of my guys. You know, Mopar, Motorsport, DJK Racing, David White, my crew. Thank you very much. My family at home. So uh, awesome win uh, for, for tonight. Three wins this season for Andrew Ranger. And he solidifies his spot atop the point standings. Let's take a look at the auto value top 10 finishers here today. Alex LeBay fourth, Donald Teach fifth, and what was an epic battle. It seemed to me Anthony Simone battled hard today as well to come home ninth. Let's run down and chat with your second place finisher, Todd. Jason Hathaway with a podium finish here in Edmonton. You had a big charge through the field tonight. Yeah, we did. Uh, starting 11th, you know, wasn't too great. And then we ended up getting bumped to the back. I think we got all the way back to 15th or whatever and come all the way back to second. So I don't know if we would have had anything for the 27. He was pretty good, but I sure as hell would have given her a good shot in the outside there if we could have got back going. But as, uh, you know, great Western swing for our team and uh, bringing on the 46 this week too is a bit of an extra workload. But uh, everybody at Kubota and Chaco and Fast Eddie giving us the opportunity. It's a great way to uh, end the Western swing. Great run for the three team. So that'll help Jason Hathaway in the point standings as we take a look at the championship order. Ranger now with 18 points at the top of the heap. LP Dumlin, 30 points back, but mark my words, Dave Bradley, those 18 points back instead of 30 points back for Lacroix, we might talk about that in September. The artisan who made that beautifully crafted trophy there to present it to your race winner, Andrew Ranger. Tonight's NASCAR on TSN Telecast has been brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs, Born to Burn, by Silver Wax, and by Honey Goo from Clean Flow on the Honey of a Lube. Well, Dave, our business out west is all done. Now we head to Trois-Rivières, Quebec, for one of our premier events of the season. The Hotel Le Concorde 50 from all of us at TSN. We'll see you there. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.